Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional 9-Dong Go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the attachment underneath Joseki that we see here in the upper right and the invasion that Black is planning to do against it. So we have a fairly common opening and White has just slided into the upper left corner. And I'll show you just a few moves to prepare for the invasion. So extending on the upper side here is always a big move for Black. It reinforces the stone in the corner, and it also sets up an invasion on the side. White protected the left side, and now it's Black's chance to invade the upper side. So when Black invades, Black will always start with this move here on the third line, in between White. When Black does so, White has two choices, but first I'll tell you that this is the best way for White to answer. Let's also take a look at this move. This is probably not so good because Black will just push out. And it's important to remember that now Black can connect underneath by playing here. So by playing straight down on the second line, Black can either connect here or can connect on this side. It's one or the other. So if White, if White plays here, in this position, Black can actually start with the cut. But this depends on the ladder. So like if Black plays here and then plays the attachment underneath. Now Black has this forcing move which makes the connection underneath safe. So Black is connected underneath and has cut White in the center with these two stones. So provided White cannot capture in a ladder by playing here, we can see that the ladder is going to hit these black stones here. It's going to hit this black stone and the ladder does not work for White. So this is good for black. But even in the case that the ladder does not favor black, it's perfectly all right just to connect underneath. In which case white will connect. Black still has the threat of playing here to cut white off, and white will probably have to answer, and black can just play away. So something like this might happen. And this is a good variation for black. White has played a lot of moves that are not really accomplishing very much in this area. And White's whole group here is not uh, completely alive yet. So this is a bit troublesome for White. Also, if White uh, just gives up at this point and decides not to cut Black off with this move, it is actually better for White to play simply a connection on the outside, and Black can just connect underneath here. So in this case, Black has gotten some extra territory towards the corner, making that territory close to 20 points, and also has a follow-up move when Black can play this Hane here to cut White off again. So in this case, Black would play a double Hane and cut off the whole White, the group of four stones. This is actually something that Black could play immediately. It's a very big move, capturing these four stones and extending towards the right side. This makes black solid territory just in the corner area, just in, for instance, this area. It's already about 30 points. And then there's some extra potential on the right. So this is very big for black. So it is better for white to play the attachment on the top. When white does this, there's various ways that black can deal with this stone here. And there are two major ways for Black to, to save it. Turns out Black can either play the simple way, is to bump to the left, and White will simply cover and play here. And the virtue of this variation for White is that White has a very solid shape here on the, on the outside, and also is expanding into the center with a, a position here in the center and with White's stones fairly well connected, White does not really have anything to worry about. So this is a minor loss for White. It's okay for White. Another way for Black to play is to play straight down. This is also a tesuji where Black is threatening to connect to the left side or the right side. And White will simply allow that to happen by playing here and allowing Black to connect to the right. In this case, white might just play away. 
And again, we have a white group that is fairly well connected. We could mimic the previous variation and have white even play here, and that would be good enough. So either way, this is perfectly fine for white. The point is that when white is connected up and pointing out towards the center, it's just some territory that black has gained on the side of the board. And when white played away and allowed black to invade the upper side like this, that was part of the equation. So it's something a uh, loss that white is willing to take in this board position. If we look at the entire game, I could say that white was getting a very nice position on the left side while this was happening. So this was part of white's calculation in allowing black to invade. And now I will show you the move that I suggest for black being the best move. It's best, instead of bumping against here or playing down, to play the Hane here. This move is offering to sacrifice the black stone here in order to get a strong position on the outside. In many board positions, this will be the best move. When black plays here, white will naturally cut. Black can play an Atari from outside and push. So the idea is just to get some extra stones on the outside and a nice position facing towards the center. And this also will reinforce the, th the three space extension that black has here in the upper left. So at this point white seems to have a number of choices. If white simply plays here, black could even play away. Black could play away. Um, locally black A at this point I'll mark it with this triangle, I suppose. This point is a very nice uh, shape for black to play. But it might be just reasonable for black to be playing away to the, the lower side, which is also a big point. And already black has gotten a lot of potential profit by playing these stones on the outside. Another move that might seem possible for white is bumping against here. White has to be a bit careful with this move. Black will simply cover and play the double honey. And you can see that if white goes after that one stone, black will capture the three stones on the right. And this will be just bad for white with this. These stones left behind on the right. White's group on the left, even though it's captured a stone, it's not that strong either. So this would be a disaster. Instead, white will play a connection. White does have to be careful about how white connects here. If white connects this way, white will need to add another stone to this group because if white plays away, there's a nice black tesuji which takes advantage of that. And so black can play here. And if white plays here, black is going to win this semi. So just to make it simpler, I'll add a few more moves. You can see at this point already, black has one more liberty than white does. So black is winning this semi. -eye. If white plays this way, black can connect underneath. And this white group has only the one big eye in this area. And this eye is a false eye, which means that if black can somehow manage to surround it, this is going to be a very serious problem for white. So this is even white's life is in danger in this case. So Coming back to this point, white would have to, if white connected here, white would have to add a stone to it, which is a bit painful. So instead, white's correct move is to play the hanging connection here. And in this case, white does not have that problem. White can play away. And this is about even, I would say. Black might play away also. The point is that when white has played the hanging connection, white doesn't have to worry about this move because white can make an eye here. And in this case, it's a group with an eye against a group that does not have an eye. And black is just going to lose the race to capture. White, white, could, keep an, white could keep the eye here. Or in some cases, it might be a good idea to take away black's liberty like this. Either way works. So that's uh, the bumping against. Um, just to go through it once more, white will play the hanging connection and play away. And this is... Black does not have that move, but this will be about an even result. It might be actually better for white to play the attachment underneath. This is quite similar. When white plays the attachment underneath, this is a better shape than bumping against black, but black will counter by playing down here, 
And for the time being, white has to stop black from connecting here. If white plays from the right, black can bump against white here. And this is a disaster because white's two stones here have already been captured. So this was bad. It means that white has to cover from this side. So this does capture the two black stones, but black will play this hane, which is the tesuji to squeeze white. White cuts. And black forces with this move. White will probably just answer that. And black gets a very nice position on this side, like this. So this wall, not only reinforcing the whole area here, white, white's territory on the side is being reduced. White might play here, and black can just play the, the big point on the lower side. Later on, black will have this forcing sequence, which means that white's territory is not so big. So I'm suggesting that this is the best variation for both sides here, with black playing the, the hane to sacrifice this one stone, and white playing the attachment underneath to get uh, the best position, but it's uh, not bad for black either. So after this, the uh, fight will probably, uh, both players can play away and black will play towards the lower side. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, please hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed for the channel. Thank you for watching.